video, we're going to be talking about can jealousy help your relationship? Yes. So welcome to Great Love and Sex through IFS. Internal Family Systems. It's a model of spiritual psychology where we teach you the what you need to do in order to have a great love and sex life. Excellent. So my name is Percy Ballard. I'm Emily Luke. That's Dr. Percy Ballard, Harvard trained psychiatrist. And so That's what she does. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an author, a mentor, self-leadership expert, so I do all sorts of other things. So together we've come together to share the deepest learnings and teachings about the spiritual psychology of love and sex that other channels are not talking about. Right. So to today's topic, can mm -hmm. jealousy really help your relationship? What do you do when jealousy is harming a relationship? So two questions and we can actually nail both of them right here, I think. Yeah, and the answer, the bottom line is yes and no. So let me start with famous therapist that has written the best-selling books and the TED Talk sensation Esther Perel. She wrote yeah. the two books, Mating and Cactus, captivity and she's the world's foremost expert and researcher on infidelity, eroticism, and passion in long-term partnerships. And so one of the scenarios in one of her books is think about when you're at a party with your significant other and you're watching the significant other flirt with mm -hmm. the opposite sex or the same sex or you know whatever whatever your orientation is. And yeah, it's natural to have a little bit of jealousy get stirred up. But what she's saying is when you are secure in your attachment with the other person and you watch your partner flirt with the people, other people that are so into them, that is actually foreplay. That can turn you on so that you're like, oh my gosh, let's just say this is a heterosexual couple. He is mine and look at this. He is just still so attractive to other women and I just love that. I love that I get to have him and he and I, have such great communication that we kind of wink at each other. We let each other mm -hmm. flirt with the opposite sex. So if I were the female in the party and other men want to go, uh, want to flirt with me and my partner is also at the party, let him go and flirt with the women and I'll flirt with the guys. We're not going to go home to bed, but this is also validating each other's sexiness. Hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that because we all want to feel alive and feel like we're, we still got it. And at the end of the day, when you're acknowledging each other, that foreplay and that tension that was created from witnessing your partner mm -hmm. be get, get so turned on by members of the opposite sex, that can just get really hot and heavy in the car. And like you have a great lovemaking session as a result of that tension that was created at the party. Right. So that's healthy jealousy. Maybe it's a little bit of jealousy that comes into play. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like there is there's the aspect of going outside or having someone else um, outside of the relationship add to the sense of desirableness of a person. So, you know, seeing that other people are turned on by your partner is like, that makes them a lot harder. That's a huge turn on. See, I knew someone who was an exotic dancer and dated an exotic dancer, and they would sometimes go to one another's clubs to see how their partner operates in that club and see other people getting turned on by them. And that actually is something that they found a huge turn on. And, you know, afterwards, inevitably, it was like, you know, that person isn't going home with anyone else, but you can actually see how attractive your partner is yeah. to other people. And that helps to emphasize how attractive they are to you as well. Exactly, it's a great turn off. Here's another story that's pretty interesting. I, I met this guy at a networking meeting and he had been on this on and off relationship with this woman and this woman is not as confident as he would like her to be. And so she doesn't exude the charisma that he always dreamed of what he would like in a life partner. But she has all these other qualities that she likes. And so he's like, yeah, you know, I want to be able to go to a party with her and I want to be able to put my arms around her and say, yeah, she's mine. I've watched her stand on her own two feet, light up the room with her charisma mm -hmm. and her confidence. And that girl is mine. Mm -hmm. And so he was in this conundrum of that's a quality that I want in my woman. Mm -hmm. And can I tolerate her being so clingy to me, so that's not creating any mild form of jealousy in him. He's not able to watch her be be the turn on for other guys, and mm. that's affecting him. So I think that's the opposite, because when you do go into the opposite of clinging to another because mm. you don't believe in how hot you are mm. or how great you are, 
Mm. That could actually be a turnoff. Right. So that confidence and being able to navigate separately from that person yeah. is a turn on. And also just the appreciation because you know that they have a choice of being with you. They have a choice of being with you at that point and they're choosing to be with you, which is a huge turn on for that to be a choice. Yeah. Uh, when it feels like a need, you know, not so much of a turn on. There's a lot of insecurity yeah. in that. You know what would be great if we just do a role play of how we would actually have this conversation of naming the parts of us that are just so enamored with how this jealousy part adds to the foreplay. Yeah, and so that's that interesting. And, and we might raise a question there because I'm not sure, is that, a, is that a jealousy part? Jealousy, I mean, we'll talk about the emotion of jealousy and the emotion okay. of envy, yeah. but it's basically saying that there's a recognition. Yeah. There's a recognition that you're attracted to other people. Yeah, well, you know what? Let's, let's pretend that, that Percy and I are partners and I could say, well, that was just so hot watching you work the room and how you were just so present and flirtatious with some of the women. Hmm. I gotta admit that there's a part of me that was a little bit jealous, hmm. mm -hmm. but then another part of me said, you know, Percy is mine. Yeah. I get to go home with him. Yeah. And, and so this jealousy part just kind of quieted down. And I think that that jealousy part is not big because of the fact that we have such open and honest communication. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot more to our relationship than will ever be with anyone that I'm just meeting. Like we have, we have a yeah. history. And so, how do you feel when you watch me flirt with other men? When I watch you flirt with other men, that's hot. Like okay. I get to see, like I get to see how sexy you are to to everyone. Like yeah. to you know, not just me, but to other partners. And it makes me feel wonderful that you are choosing to be me, with me. Yeah. Like you could, you could have a lot of different men. But the fact that you're choosing to be with me makes me feel really grateful. And uh, it's also pretty hot because I know that what you were doing with them, the way that you were, you know, smiling and flirting with them, it's like, oh, I want some of that too. Yeah. And I get to have that and take it a, a couple steps further. Yeah. Oh, I feel the same way. This is yeah. so beautiful because I think, I think in, in a lot of relationships, we don't get to talk about the attractiveness to other sex and how we find Mm -hmm. how we find other people that we interact with mm -hmm. and so i think that if we didn't have this conversation because i have so much love for you mm -hmm. if we didn't have this conversation i could see how my jealousy part can get really needy and active mm -hmm. and eventually mm -hmm. blow up in anger yeah. at you for watching you flirt with other women because yeah. i don't know how you really feel about me oh yeah well yeah. other right you know how i feel about you and you know that I'm also a natural human being. There are other people in the world who are attractive to me, but they're never going to be you. And I think that's what we both know about each other that makes our relationship secure. Yeah. Right. And that's great. Right. So right. that's a demonstration of the kind of intimate conversation that you need to have in order to keep jealousy pretty low. Because right. Esther Perel in her right. talks basically saying people get jealous with affairs and say they find out that somebody has an affair mm -hmm. because you're not talking openly about what makes you feel alive. Because mm. affairs are caused by feeling dead in a relationship mm. and you want another person to make you feel alive. Mm. So let's talk about this. Like when jealousy does, because this is an example of non-toxic jealousy or one might call it envy. And, but what, when it does, when it does start to get toxic and it does start to poke on insecurities, how can you have conversations around that, that restore the security in the relationship? Yeah. So, um, we'll use an extreme example. I, I know a lot of people who are in open relationships and sometimes people will ask them, you know, does jealousy ever come up? There's an open relationship. Yeah. And, and yeah, of course, of course it comes up. It comes up, jealousy comes up, I think, in every relationship. We need to accept it as a natural human emotion that we all have. We just want to know what it means and how to relate to it. Just going to put a, a plug in. There's an excellent, excellent book that I read, I listened to, and it was instantly applicable to everything that I do in day-to-day -day life and as a therapist. Uh, it's called Language of Emotions by Carla McLaren. And it talks about the emotion of jealousy and jealousy and envy. And those two can be, can be different things. They have, even as I say them, 
and you're hearing them, they probably have two different feels to you. One, envy is gonna be an emotion when you note that there's some inequality here, some inequality of resources or something that you want. There's another person that is having more of that resource than you are, and you envy it. You're not necessarily angry at them, you don't hate them, um, but there is, so it's like in a partnership, it's like if I see, if I see a partner that is, you know, if we go out dancing and they start dancing with someone else, I might have some envy. I might feel like, oh, you know, that, that looks pretty nice. I also wish that I was dancing with them right now. I know that I'm going to be dancing with them later, but there's not a, a key insecurity there. I don't feel like there's another person taking my partner away. When you feel as though there's another person taking your partner away, taking something that you feel like is, is yours or something that you've become attached to, then that's where the jealousy comes in because you feel angry, you feel yeah. heated, um, and it's, it's more than just envy. And people can kind of taste the difference between those two emotions, envy and jealousy. And this is where you need to gain the courageously vulnerable language tools mm -hmm. in order to speak for your emotions instead mm -hmm. of acting out the jealousy where mm -hmm. you're saying something nasty to cover up your jealousy. Yeah. This is like, hey, Percy, mm -hmm. can I share with you what's coming up for me right now mm -hmm. based on what I observed? Yeah, let's continue this, this role play. This okay. is good. I watched you just bounce around with those women over there, but right now it's like my jealousy part is just like feeling so badly hmm. and, and I'm feeling really insecure. Do you feel like one of those, one of those people is going to take you, take me away from you? Cause that's never going to happen. Oh. Like, do you know, do you know our, what our relationship is? I know. Versus because, their relationship? I know, right. I know, but because our relationship, I value it so much. Right. I'm so afraid of losing you. Right. Their relationship can never be our relationship. They are completely different people from you. And you are the one that I'm with. You're the one that I'm with right now. You're the one that I want to go home with. You know, oh, this is okay. not... Okay, oh, thank you, thank you. There's nothing there. I hope you, you know, I hope you can, you know, even enjoy watching, you know, I don't have to. If you want me to not dance with them right now, I don't have to if it makes you feel better. Well, you know what? You could dance with them, but just don't bump and grind with them. Okay. Right. That I, I, good I know. I know you weren't doing that, but I think a, a part of me was just exaggerating what you were doing with them, thinking that uh, because this okay. needy part, this child part inside of me, is like, is he gonna stay with me? And that has to do with my abandonment issues from childhood. Yeah, I know. Okay. I know. I know. I know. We talked about this with the therapist, and and yeah. I'm so happy that you're able to receive my vulnerabilities of sharing this emotion with you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I I certainly don't want that girl inside of you to feel insecure. I would never want that for you. Yeah, yeah thank you. And um, yeah, for me, I'm, I'm just having fun. I don't want you to see any of these other people as a threat to, to our relationship. Oh, because our relationship you. is thank a you. lot more. This is just dancing. Yeah. Yeah. So that is how you have that conversation to nip jealousy in the, in the butt. Mm -hmm. You see how jealousy can help and hurt. Mm -hmm. Jealousy just helped our intimacy. Mm -hmm. It just deepened our intimacy. Mm -hmm. Right. But when you don't speak for jealousy, and when mm -hmm. you let it fester, it mm -hmm. can ruin relationships. Yes, yes. So let's add in another situation, another caveat for open relationships. And this is, you know, one thing learned is that when people are actually sexually active with more than one person and a partner gets jealous of people that the other partner is with, what people share helps with them is actually getting curious about what that other relationship is like. Because when you get curious, when you ask, oh, you know, what sorts of things do you two do together? And that can even, even get into like, what is the, what is the sex like? Is it, is it different than sex with me? You know, what do they like on their pizza versus what I like on my pizza? <laughs> reference to a prior video. What's different about their relationship than our relationship? And when people get curious about the other relationships of the other partner, they start to see that that other relationship is between two completely different people. No, no relationship can never replace their relationship. So it's like friendship. When you hang out with, when someone hangs out with another friend, it's not like, oh, that friendship is gonna replace our friendship. You know yeah. that you're a different person. You talk about different things with this person. You know, and the same goes with uh, sexual relationships. It's not for everyone. When jealousy does come up in open relationships or any, any relationship, we're actually discussing 
what that relationship is like and getting curious about it can help one realize that no other one no relationship can entirely replace yeah. another relationship when you're dealing with two completely different people and curiosity is the key to starting this this kind of vulnerable conversation i'm curious about mm -hmm. dot 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 yeah so she might ask in that prior role play that we did she might ask you know what happens inside of you when you dance with them versus what happens inside of me or oh, what that, happens that would be a beautiful conversation right you know you could see that okay there's a deeper there's a deeper connection between two partners that have been together for a long time, there's a whole history yeah. and the novelty, okay, there might be some, you know, some fireworks there, but it's not the root, it's not the source connection yeah. um, that two people that have been together for a long time might have, and there's no danger of replacement there. What changes that jealousy, that insecurity into just envy, into a sense of, oh, okay, I get that this person is dancing or, you know, doing more with another person right now, but I don't have to be afraid of them being taken yeah. away. I don't have to get jealous. Although I can have envy in the moment and that can yeah. come and go. So the bottom line is jealousy can help your relationship when you use it as a doorway mm -hmm. to discuss the vulnerable things and that could deepen your intimacy. Oh yeah. yeah. And then there's also the question, the answer of no, it mm -hmm. cannot help your relationship if you do not own that emotion and speak for jealousy. That's right, that's right. Greater concept here is that it's the, in building a relationship and building a healthy attachment, it's actually the ruptures of attachment and the reconnection that makes the attachment stronger. It's like yeah. building muscle. The muscle fibers break, they grow back stronger, and at the end you have a bigger muscle. It, it, and that speaks to the concept of um, the famous Swiss psychologist with his quote on, there is no coming to consciousness without pain. Mm -hmm. So if you want to build mm -hmm. really deep, intimate relationships, it's through conflict mm -hmm. and frustrations and right. anger that is going to help to build it to that next level where it super glows the relationship. But you have to know how to navigate the conflict. Right. You have to know how to fight, how to argue in a relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, a, a friend of mine who's a therapist, I think she wouldn't mind me saying, uh, Robin Vogel, um, who does a lot of great Tantra workshops. You should really go to them. She's also an IFS trained therapist, but she often talks about the, the importance of arguing in a relationship and embracing the conflict and really, really talking things through. And so it's not about whether you argue that destroys or makes a relationship. It's how you argue, because you're you're gonna argue. If you don't argue, things will just things will just it's fizzle boring. Out, right? Yeah. Because if you want truly deep, deep emotional intimacy, you do have to have conflict. Sometimes right. the conflict we do blow up with our parts mm -hmm. and we kind of vomit out things we regret. But if you know how to repair and right. if you know how to step back and zoom out and say, Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. I have a part that just like overtook me. Mm -hmm. And this is really understand the, understanding the internal family systems framework of self-leadership mm -hmm. because we have all of this internal family of our parts and our emotions mm -hmm. that can sometimes say nasty things, je the jealousy feeling, the anger, the frustrations. Absolutely. And so when we know how to speak mm -hmm. and navigate the conflict, that is when it will, you will get to closer and closer and deeper intimacy, right. which is what's going to lead to fulfillment. Right. So a lot of our videos are on that. You can definitely subscribe, uh, check out some of our other videos. And uh, if you would like to, if you have a question for us, or if you would like to have some sort of a consultation with either myself or with Emily, feel free to email us. Our email address is greatloveandsex at gmail.com. And uh, yeah, we'd be happy to get back to you. Might even make a, make a video on your question or request, or we can talk one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, if you send us your questions, we're more than happy to answer it on video for free. Great. Yeah. Looking Until forward next to more. Time. Take care. We'll